FDR's famous Campobello Island Canada Cottage. Get a little closer up. See more of it later on. Now we get a different angle. We get two flags of the International Park. Some color. I don't know how we can how well we're gonna be able to see it. The headquarters building. A few flowers around it. and fir trees in the background. On the other side of that is uh, just beyond those trees is Passamaquoddy Bay. And on around I can see just see the tip of the huge cottage. We are just to the north side of the headquarters building. The trees in the background. Some real pretty flowers. Just don't know how they're gonna how well they're gonna show up again. Here's what we can do. There through the trees you can see Passamaquoddy Bay. And we should pick up the cottage down in there. Down through the trees. Past Macquarie Bay. Out by the end of the out by the end of the cottage. There's another angle of the shooting from the north from the front of the cottage. Back towards the main entrance. tall trees leading up to the cottage past McQuaddy Bay just to the end of the cottage and then the beginning of the cottage I guess a summer home would be more appropriate than a cottage Visitors coming out of the valley way over there. Here we're right up. Close. 
close to the cabin. Seen Passamaquoddy Bay. Flags. Close up to the flags. And I gotta go. Now we're standing looking from the uh, headquarters building to the southeast to the main road. Looks like a camper coming in there. Beautiful color. Probably even hear the flags popping in the breeze. Here we've got the sign telling about the park. If I could zoom up there and keep it calm enough that we can read it. Stop in French. Everything over here in Canada tends to be also in French. This is the main entrance to the park. More of the main entrance. That's where we can read the sign. And the cottage in the background. Main building. Beautiful color. Flag. down by the main building. Looking at the plaques. Maybe she turn around.
turkey gown. Tell the way he's still is buttoned up that it might be a little bit cool today. through those trees there and uh, almost directly behind the headquarters building is the Roosevelt Summer Home. Just a glimpse, just a little tiny bit of sun shining out. But maybe I'd try to pick up a little bit of this color, see how it comes out in the sun. That's uh, uh, gone under again. just the corner of the cottage peeking out some of the foliage and water tower there used to be a windmill on top of that taking it off Charles, uh, how you doing? I'm back on the bog. Out in the bog, huh? Right. Got, right. It, got any deer out there? Hey, got, any, got any? Just don't pay attention to me. Go ahead and visit. Okay. I, I just, we're going to be leaving next Friday, and I haven't been out much at all because I've been out the cold since I've been here. So. But I started knocking when I saw you coming. I started knocking on you. I looked right that way too, but yeah, I didn't you see were, it. you were. That's the car right there. I want to get a couple pictures on my camera because I've only got a couple left. So, did you see him back? I couldn't. I saw him back. Yeah. Yeah, I saw him. <laughs> You all want to get out of the wind somewhere? Huh? You want to get out of the wind somewhere? You got laryngitis. Me, I've been right over in it every damn day, Hank. <laughs> Is that right? We got over a mile with that damn old stuff put up back in that bar. Got to take all the old stuff up, put new stuff back in for it. So they glued on it in wheelchairs and stuff. Oh, I see. Yeah. They told me yeah. they, they were really nice to me over there in that office. And they said, well, where'd you go? Well, you went over the main office. Yeah. Yeah, over there. Office. Yeah. yeah, there were two men that were there. Yeah, it was Ron and Beckworth over there, and Harry Stevens over there, and Harold Bailey's over there. Yeah, well, they all get and Roger Kirk. They there. called Harry. Harold, I think. They Harold. called Harold. Yeah, well, yeah. Del, Del, Del Denzler and Christine came out and told me he'll stand the ball. I mean, Mike oh. gets ready to come in anyway. He told me he was going to come in because yeah. Greg's ready to come in. Yeah, she came around and they came around here and told me. That's good. Uh, Del Denzler. She was in the office over there. And she said, I'll go looking for her. And uh, when I came walking back over here looking for Hank, she said, uh, have you got your car over here? And I said, yes, the little blue Texas car over there. And she said, well, we'll go look for her. So they were heading for you. And I didn't know that she was going to bring me over here or whether that she was. brought the car right along with you. Huh? huh? But along with you too. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I thought you had a No, we tow it. 
We tow it. See that little. Yeah, we're gonna sign off for a while here, and I'll visit with you. Well, here we are at 9:30 in the morning on the 11th of October. Beautiful and clear. Broke at daylight at 20 degrees. It's now 38 degrees. We're on the Cutler Road, about halfway between Cutler and Alden and Ellen's house, looking to the south and southwest over a blueberry land and trees in the background with some fall color. These blueberry bushes turn this beautiful red in the in the winter time, in the fall and winter. And as we swing around towards the northwest, over the top of the car, and finally to the north on Route 191. Straightest road signs we'll see. Most of them are got double crooks in them. Let me bring some of that color up a little closer. Someone walking in the road. And we'll travel a little farther down the road, take some more pictures. Here's an area where we, a lot of moose and deer have been sighted. Probably over the years, a lot of them have been killed. We're just sighting it some color up in there, or that's getting it for the terrain that we have here. Shut it down and go past the post of the, of the of the car here, and I'll see if I can take one out of the front windshield. Here's another area where we're looking to the to the south on 191. coming. And we're swinging around to the north. a mile farther north on the road looking to the south southeast to cut the road and as we zoom in maybe we can see where it says Cutler, which is the Cutler town line. This is heavy brush, very little color, but an idea of what the terrain looks like down here. I won't 
swing any farther because if we do we'll be going into the sun through the windshield whether we'll work out or not more through the windshield I'm doing this because there's really no place to park this Sherman's um, house up here where he parked his car to go hunting he hunts on both sides of this road now here's an area which is about two and two and a half miles south of Alden and Allen's house still on 191 of course see around the we pan around, you'll see a clearing where they're taking some timber, other timber in the background. Pan around towards the south, down 191. Through here, I'm going to. Shut down here in a second. Maybe if I zoom in, it might bring in the color a little better because we're pointing almost towards the sun. Now we're down about 100 yards down the road to the south from the last segment. And shooting to the north by our car. Looks like somebody's bought the property that was for sale here in this in this area. I hear a car coming. So I'm going to shut her. Shut her off because I don't want to get run over. I shot out of the windshield because it's difficult to just to see if we can it'll work. She doesn't motor home. We're up on top of the hill. Looking down at the motor home. Well, here I am in the Campobello Island, Canada, looking at the Tourist and Visitors Bureau. And there's the Narrows and the town of Blue Back across the Narrows. On a beautiful sunshiny day, standing on this hill, and a sharp breeze coming in, temperature is around 32 or 3 degrees. Looking out over Passamaquoddy Bay. Come back and there's the Mahalan Lighthouse which sits on the Narrows of Lubeck. And it's just one of the old American Can Company thing is almost falling down. And a little bit of a close-up of the waterfront of Lubeck.
had that on manual focus. I don't know how it came out. I don't know how that happened, but we'll put it back on automatic focus and take it again just in case I, it didn't come out. Passing Quaddy Bay. We come up on the on the folly, the island out there, which we'll zoom up on. Folly, Treats Island to the left. That's the back shore. Swing around to the waterfront a little bit. It's so cold that I'm shivering more than usual. Not much breeze. Canadian flag. I guess the Campabella Island flag. And as we look out over the pan around, we look way up into the Cobbs Cook Bay where Henry's property is. And Cook Bay. I can swing on around and we can barely pick up Eastport through the tops of the bushes. I'm now standing on the west side of the Tourist and Visitors Bureau in Campobello, Canada. Here across the the bay and the Franklin Delano Roosevelt Bridge connecting Lubeck, Maine and Campobello Island, Canada. And the Narrows runs between. And the town of Lubeck sitting on the hill in the waterfront. And the Mulholland Light. And we zoom up. And then we move around to the old American Can Company in the waterfront of Lubeck. There's those red buildings is where they process the Salmon now, previously was R.G. Peacock Canning Company, which put up famous Admiral brand sardines. Swing on around to the American Customs Building and Franklin Delano Roosevelt Bridge. the same area. We'll go ahead and pick up the entire town of Lubeck. Downtown area. You can see the church steeple on top and I want to zoom in so that you can see the steeple of the Lubeck Congregational Christian Church, the water tower, and then across the street the temple. Church. And then as we pan on around the, in the Cobbs Cook Bay, way up around the point up there is where Henry's family could be. Well, I 
was on the on the island, I couldn't resist coming back over here to Franklin Delano Roosevelt International Park to get a sunshine picture of this beautiful tree sitting in front of the headquarters building. And I want to go around and get a little more pictures of the of Roosevelt's home, which I didn't take in detail last time. <clears throat> in the area of the Roosevelt's cottage, we shoot through the trees. You can see the waters of past McCarty Bay and the cottage through the trees. And the roadway that leads up past the cottage. And we'll move up a little closer, get some more pictures. Tourists coming out of the college. Now we're sighting a little bit of color on the road that goes in front of Roosevelt's cottage. And the trees that line the roadway to the cottage. and uh, Canadian flags. Drawing the main entrance to the cottage. Bringing down the to the cottage. See a few of the beautiful flowers that are left. The whole length of the house. West side. I'm looking across the little broader view of Eastport and the boat dock in the background. These are the plaques that Stella said she wished that she could should have taken a picture of. 
It's evidently when they dedicated this place. I better boogie out of here. I'm shooting this film from the observation platform on Friar's Head, Campobello Island, New Brunswick, Canada. This is from the platform that I fell off of a few years ago. Broke a good camera. I wonder I didn't break my neck. We're looking along the shoreline of of uh, Campobella. Right down there is a pen that is a fishware. It's a trap where they catch herring, sardines, kippered herring and all of those good things. And as we pan around, more hair, more fish wear. And as we pan around, we see some salmon pens. These are pens for the salmon farm over here in Campobella. This area up here is the ship passage which goes around towards the north and the northeast and around the east Quaddy Light, which is up way up around the point, which is the entrance into the Atlantic Ocean. And we look across to Deer Island, Deer Island, Canada. Across past McQuaddy Bay to Eastport, Maine. Then we can look, zoom that up a little bit. See the waterfront, a portion of the lower waterfront the southern waterfront of, East, of Eastport. You can't see the main part of the town or the, or the waterfront from here. Come on around and across this area. Before 1933 they were talking about harnessing the tide in the Passamaquoddy Tidal Power Project which never did come to a conclusion. Well, up around the corner there is Cobbscook Bay. All around the bend is where Henry's property and salmon pens are located. 
and they swing on around. Down in this area is, is more salmon pens. I'm looking across there to the North Lubeck Point, the road that goes over there goes by those houses on up to Henry's place. Then we swing around. Somewhere down through the trees is Lubeck, which we can't see at this time. These are plaques that tell you about the area. Well, I guess that does it from here with a set of boogie 